don't miss the newest in sim racing. Watch our news right here, right now. Greetings Romis and welcome to Rom Rom, the channel sharing the joy of sim racing and to our regular news roundup, our weekly sim racing news. Welcome to the channel, thanks for stopping by, my name is Serta and I will be your host for this video. If you have any news for us, send us a mail to news at romrom.net. What a mix of hardware and software news we have this week, even when it comes to sales we have something for you, more about it later in this segment. The great news for us and also for you is that we've grown our team, you are accustomed to the wonderful voice of Cody whispering sweet information on our broadcast and he's done a ton and a half of work behind the scenes like the new intros we've already been using for a while. Well, soon coming to our broadcast in person and already helping out with the news is Ike Sky, who very gracefully offered his help in the inner workings of the channel. Unluckily for him, we accept it. Expect also more content as he'll be bringing in ideas and writing scripts for further videos. Please welcome him as warmly as you welcome us every time we bring a video out. In less important news, Kunos have released the American Track Pack and Challengers Pack DLCs for the console version of Assetto Corsa Competizione and, as was planned, R Factor 2 released the Q4 content drop. All the new content comes packaged in the 2022 Q4 All-In Pack for €27.88 and they have released a British track pack for €19.84. What the thought process behind these very specific numbers is may remain a mystery forever. Be aware, this pack does not yet include all of the BTCC tracks, we're still missing modern laser scan versions of Alton Park, Knock Hill, Snetterton and Silverstone and Studio 397 don't mention them in any way, so if you ask us, don't buy this DLC just yet. And if you're waiting for the release of the newest Automobilista 2 version, you may have to wait a bit longer. While Reza had planned a public release for this weekend, the latest release candidate still had some bugs, so we may have to wait a couple of days more. Sales! We promised you news about sales. iRacing has reduced the price of a membership by 50%, an offer available until December 1st, and Fnatic is offering their podium racing wheel F1 registered at two-thirds of the normal price, so now you can get base and rim for 1300 euro USD. And if you want some pedals to go with it, you can get the Podium Racing Wheel F1 registered premium bundle also for two-thirds of its normal price. Still will burn a 1500 euro USD big hole in your bank account though. And they also acknowledge they are having issues being able to secure the production of CSLDD because of the component shortage which also includes chips. With regards to the Bentley, Podium Steering Wheel, GT3 and the QR2, they explain they are working on engineering changes of the prototypes as they are not yet satisfied with the quality. American Truck Simulator had a small update to the 1.46 version this week and has a big update coming on Tuesday. Apart from things we've already told you before, see the link up there, like ownable cisterns, custom city intros or even the extremely interesting driveshaft torque, as well as adding the US 20 road between Idaho and Montana, there's also a new gallery for you budding photographers, just not when you're driving your big rig, okay? Think of the gallery as an advanced screenshot manager where you can have ye old screenshots as well as discovered viewpoints and a new thing, photo trophies. Photo trophies are special locations you will be able to see in the map where you can make specially interesting photos. Drive there, move your camera around in photo mode, find the trophy. It is also from the gallery where you will be able to select pictures to upload to World of Trucks. SCS are so excited about this new option, they've even written a blog post about it. You can find the link to it as always in the description of the video. Also, there's a new company browser for American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator 2, so you can search for specific contract giving companies or filter contracts by cargo or trailer type. 
Next week, however, comes the release of something big. Huge. Really big. Texas, the second largest state in the USA, comes to ATS on the 15th of November and you only will be able to see how fast Cody buys this DLC with the most modern high-speed cameras. This newest DLC will bring 7 special transport routes between 14 locations as well as hundreds of miles of Texas highway for drivers to explore. 15th of November is Texas Day for all of y'all American truckers. Yeehaw! As was to be expected, E8's in the game is dropping the Project Cars franchise completely and officially. No Project Cars 4 anytime soon, but this was to be expected after they made a mockery of their franchise with Project Cars 3 anyway. Reading between the lines of the EA communication, it's clear sim racing is not their focus and they prefer to stick to licensed racing games and other racing franchises which can be milked much better with microtransactions. But they seem also to find multiplayer very important, which is a good thing. This move away from sim racing does not bode well for the WRC franchise they will have the rights to from 2023 on. Speaking about WRC, the Dirt franchise has also been dropped by EA and we suspect many developers from that franchise and maybe also from Project Cars will be moved towards WRC 23 or whatever the game's gonna be called. We at Rum Rum don't expect that one to become the new Dirt Rally 2, much as we'd wish for it to happen. Adding to all this was Ian Bell, EA SKP twice and founder of the now for all intents and purposes defunct SMS, who on Twitter professed he had called all of the old P Cars 2 team and that most of the P Cars 2 superstars were willing to join his studio MASS, which he said is working on GTR Revolution. Ian Bell being somebody with a very much inflated marketing stance and therefore sometimes a passing hold on reality, we'll have to wait and see what comes out of it. Asatec have continued their drive towards completing their coverage of the sim racing sector with their release of their sim sports Invicta, Forte and La Prima direct drive wheels as well as the new S series pedals. The wheels are designed in-house by Asatec using an open design to allow upgrading from one model to the next with a simple swap of the controller. This way they produce the same motor all the time and because of the numbers game they can produce the motors at a cheaper price. The wheel hub design has been opened up to allow other manufacturers to design wheels for these Asetec bases. What that means for the hobby wheel maker we don't know, but we will be asking these questions of Asetec. So if you have any questions regarding these wheels, leave a comment below and we will get them to Asetec. The Invi Victa is rated at 27 newton meter with 5 USB ports built into the base. The Forte is rated at 18 newton meters with the same 5 USB hub, and the La Prima, being quite stripped out, has no USB hub and is rated at 12 newton meter. This is only available as part of a bundle though, which we will get to. Asetec's new Invicta and Forte S pedals, however, aren't as new as the revolutionary wheel sets. Simply the original Invicta and Forte packed in separate housings for the sim racers who have big feet or have a rig to attach it to. Still a nice addition to the Asetec roster of products, but not something to go running out for if you already have one of the previous pedals. The new Asetec wheel bases are available for pre-order on the website, 1200 for the Invicta, 800 for the Forte and the La Prima has two options, a full La Prima package including rim and pedals for 1080 and 840 euro for just rim and base, and a very nice looking external power button for you to fix on your rig somewhere. 
we recommend on your feet. The new S series pedals carry a small premium on their previously attached parents. The 40S is available for pre-order at 439 which is a 20 euro premium on the 40 pedals and the Invicta S2 pedal set is available at 719 versus the 713 for the originals. Also don't miss out on the 200 euro voucher available when you buy a quality bundle from Assetec or their approved resellers. Link will be in the description below. F1 Manager 2022 has reached its 1.10 update and with it come a raft of fixes relating to fuel, race engineers and even a fix to team radios not matching the actions on track. Specifically, estimated race time should be more realistic now, the cars are now correctly fueled for qualifying and the engineers don't comment on low fuel for quali when the fuel levels are right, which was unnerving truth to be told. Also some software crashes and lockups happening at very specific instances, the worst of bugs have been solved. The car models have been updated to better depict their real life counterpart, the curbs have been fixed at turn 8 of Paul Ricard and several common sense fixes have been made making the whole sim function more realistically. Also after all the brouhaha in the last weeks about their commitment to support, see the link up there, they emphasize they are going to solve the DRS and safety car issues expecting to deliver until the end of the year. Leave a comment if you are still playing F1 Manager 2022 and let us know if these fixes are something you've been having issues with. Let's exchange notes. In Drift Type C you can either play the story mode racing against 13 warriors and 13 ghosts or you can drive in rally mode. In story mode every time you drift the race timer slows down. The more you drift the less time your laps will take. It also offers an incredible variety of race types including texting while driving and driving a bus. Don't ask us we don't understand it either. The tracks are procedurally generated based on some specific principles and you can design your own tracks. The work of solo developer John Works Interactive, this small little game just hit Steam last week on early access and is available for about 20 euro USD. Hey, how did you like those prototypes racing in the rain on Watkins Glen? If you missed it, check the link up there to see the race. With yet another first place, Drewface may become the winner of this championship soon or not as Johnny B is training behind with an almost as consistent a record, Rocco moving into third position in the championship from sixth after his excellent drive at the Glen where he ended second. But there's still two races to go and if Drew and or Johnny B have any kind of issue, let's say things are not set in stone yet. As they are not in the community championship with RPM taking in the most points in this race and while not overtaking curb clippers, they position themselves in third. Actually, KCSR only got the third most points in this race so they didn't jump as much forward as they've done in past races. In fact AMS unofficial collecting 68 points in total puts them in second place overall, 75 points behind curb clippers. The latter have a stable grip on first place but if they slip just once they could lose it. And if you're thinking you and your buddies could do that too, by all means, contact Jim at justrace.net who is already preparing the second season of this very impressive and very interesting series. Because the first season has been a resounding success with viewers and drivers alike and because the races were extremely interesting. And we still have two races to go, the next one being at Interlagos on the 29th of November on sprint race which are nimble cars with fiberglass body, central seat and a mid mounted V6. Using an ad blocker, understandable, still want to support us, become a patron. Amongst other perks it will fix your name for posterity like this, but you'll also get to know what we plan and what we're doing, so a big thank you to our patrons. If you come here regularly please consider subscribing especially as we are nearing the 3000 subscribers and would like to reach them before the end of November. 
Would you like to help us reach that goal? Australian sim racing company Next Level Racing have introduced their new series of cockpits they call Elite Light. We suppose the light tries to point to the price as Next Level Racing say these aluminium cockpits are lower in price than other cockpits they have while keeping the quality intact. Made of different aluminium components, these cockpits allow for very customizable settings so you can pick and choose how your rig should look like. They have have also introduced a new very interesting seat they call the ERS2 Elite seat which is even reclinable. Unluckily they only have a leather and sweet version of it so the veggies and vegans amongst us won't be able or rather willing to buy the seat. The ERS2 Elite seat will be available soon for a price of 350 euro. The Elite Light Rigs will be available for different prices within a price range of 700 to 900 euro or 600 to 800 USD depending on configuration. Our videos are much cheaper, watch them by the dozen by checking the playlist to the left or the video to the right. Until next time, save fuel, collect pickup and we'll see each other on the podium.